Okay, this is a really special chapel, the last one, and we get to hear from our teachers. So teachers, come on up. We've had such an amazing year. We had a great group of kindergartners with such kind hearts. That's what we're going to remember about this group, kind, kind hearts. And um, we love the way you love Jesus. Every time we turn around, you're being kind to each other. When we make mistakes, we're quick to ask for forgiveness and um, to continue loving each other. So we're so proud of each of you. Um, If I I have a little advice, and that would be just to continue reading the Bible so we know what's true and what's not true in this world. But um, y'all are ready for first grade. We're sad to see you go, but we know that you're all in good hands. So thank you. Now, I don't normally speak in front of crowds, so this isn't the easiest thing for me to do, but I need to personally thank Liam, Harper, Graceland, Isaiah, Case, Max, Ella, Livy, Journey, Ellison, Garrett, and Eric for the love you have shown me this year. I have grown. I always told people, I don't want to teach kindergarten. I don't want to teach kindergarten. But you know what? God had other plans in my life at my age. And you are just kindergartners. And you have lots to give. And all the other kindergartners, you are amazing. You have shown me God's love through your eyes that it couldn't be done otherwise. I have to thank Miss Taylor. I need to thank Miss Powers. I need to thank Miss Barwick. They took a chance on me. And they supported me and loved me through all of it. And with all of you, it, it all attributed to God. So no matter second grade, first grade, preschool, Rely on God because you know what? You would think sometimes, oh, life is always supposed to be easy, but it's not. But with God in your heart and when you surround yourself with Christian friends, you're going to be okay. You keep, even, even at my age, I have to keep saying, okay, dear Lord, I know you've got this. I know you've got this. Satan, you're not coming to me. You've got this, God. Like I said, and I'm, I'm kind of up there compared to some of you in age, and I'm still learning, and I'm still so passionate about each of you. And if you see me in the store, I don't care where, I don't care who you are, I want all of you, second grade, first grade, but please come see me and speak, because you are all God's gifts. You are such a magnificent group of people. God opened a door for me, and I ran through, and I have no regrets. Okay. Well, you know, this was my first year here, and it's just been the best year. I've had so much fun getting to know all of you, and that's what I think is the most fun about this job, is that I get to have all of you in class. You know, at the beginning of the year, it was really hard for me to learn like 300 names. But now, I know all of you, and I'm really going to miss you this summer. And for some people who are not coming back next year and you're going to a different school, I just want you to know that God goes with you. So you might have new teachers, you might have new friends, but God's the same and God will go with you wherever you're going. And when you come back, and for other kids, when you come back next year, I'll get to see you again, but I'm really going to miss you. And I want to tell you one of my favorite verses. It's been my favorite verse probably since fourth grade. It's Galatians 6, 9. Do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. So weary is like being tired. And God's saying, don't grow tired in being good. Keep doing the right thing, and someday you'll have a harvest. Like, Have you ever been to a pumpkin patch? Those pumpkins are not there all year long, right? There's one time of the year where they really have a harvest. They grow, and then they're a big pumpkin. And it's so weird, they start as a little seed. But that's what a harvest is. So don't grow tired of doing good. Sometimes I do. I'm like, I don't want to do good. I want to poke the person in front of me. 
but I can pray and I can say, Lord, help me to not grow weary of doing good. I want to be good and the Spirit can help us. So don't grow tired of doing good. Keep doing it and one day you will have a harvest, okay, of good things. So I hope you have a wonderful summer and that you get lots of rest so when you come back, you're able to not grow tired of doing good, okay? I love you all. Okay, in full honesty, Miss Sebesta has been gone for three days with the big seventh grader, so I had totally forgotten that we were supposed to get up here and talk. Um, but one word kept coming to my mind back there as I was sitting um, and thinking about all of you and what I feel for you and what God feels for you is that you are treasures. Um, you are his treasure and you are my treasure and I have had a wonderful year with all of you. So have a happy summer. And I also felt a lot of little tiny fingers pointing at me. Miss Woman doesn't like to come up and talk, but my kiddos back there, this is for you. And I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. But first grade, we learned a lot, right? You know what? We learned phonics and math and we like jumped a bunch of levels in reading and it was really fun, right? But let me tell you a little secret. My kiddos, I'm looking at you. As much as you learned, guess what? You kiddos taught me so much. Did you know that? You taught me so much this year. You taught me how to love one another, right? I got to see you every day, love your friends. You gave me grace so many times this year. There were times when I was like, I don't really know how to do this, right? Or that's not how we did it in kindergarten. But y'all gave me so much grace, and I'm so thankful for that. So as much as we learned, Miss Swaman learned so much more. And I love each one of you. I'm looking at all of your handsome and pretty little faces. And thank y'all to everybody for welcoming me. This is my first year. And I am so thankful to get to be here. And my oldest Paisley's waving at me. So I'm praying that y'all all have a great summer. Miss Bowman loves you. Kindergarten kiddos, I am so excited to have y'all next year. First grade's gonna be so fun. <laughs> okay, well, we're about ready to go. And I wanna leave you with something. The most important thing is that you know who Jesus is and that you believe the truth of the gospel and that you accept him as your savior. There's no other decision that is more important. And I'm so thankful that the Lord allowed me to tell you about him and to provide opportunities for you to learn about him. And I want you to love him. All you have to do is say, Jesus, come. I want you. Because I want to see all of y'all in heaven. I want to spend eternity with you as my brother or sister in Christ. I love you guys. Let's pray. It's overwhelming, Lord, that you allow us freedom here in this room without fear. We can love you, we can teach about you, we can hear about you, we can praise you, we can call out to you, we can depend on you. God, Holy Spirit, prod these kids that don't know you yet. Lord, I know your desire is for every single one of them to love you and call you as their Savior. And I know that it's a free gift. They can't earn it. Speak to their heart. I pray their hearts are ready. And we know you, omnipotent God, the one who wrote everything to existence, that you have the perfect time. I praise you, Father, that you let us be part of your work. I want heaven full, God. It's in your son's name I pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Y'all have a blessed day, a blessed Thursday. Okay, this is our teacher chapel. And so we let the teachers just have an open mic and come up and speak to you. And I'm sure that there are several that already, we don't assign them, we just let the Lord speak through them. So do you want to turn the light just a little bit? Just one, please. Okay. And I see our first one eagerly coming, Mrs. James. Good morning. I would like to 
speak a little bit to my sixth graders and a little bit to all of you. First of all, sixth grade, you have worked so hard and you've let God be your compass through this year and guide you. And my prayer is that you continue to let the Lord lead you as you go up into the next phase of life. I've seen you grow physically, some of you six inches or more. I've seen you grow academically, certainly, certainly learn things that you did not think you would ever be able to do. And I've seen you grow spiritually. And um, I've got a few tips for you and for everyone. My tips. First of all, in all that you do, give God the glory. Everything you do. Every win, every good grade, every performance, let God have the glory because He is the one. <laughs> Secondly, always be kind. Always be kind. Forgive others. We all make mistakes. Be quick to forgive because we all make mistakes. Um, be responsible and take responsibility for what you're doing. And always work hard. As you get up in seventh grade, sixth graders, you're going to have to work even harder. I know you can do it. And I just pray a special blessing on all of you as you go through this summer. I hope you have a great summer. And I want to give, a, can we give a round of applause to Mrs. Taylor for all she's done? Maybe a standing clap for Mrs. Taylor for all she's done for us. <clears throat> um, out of the things that I mentioned, working hard, yes. Being kind, yes. Um, showing uh, respect, I don't know if I mentioned that one, but showing respect. Uh, I can't, I mean, everything that she does is amazing. And the best part of all is she gives God the glory in all that she does. And I just pray that all of us can try to be more like her. Okay, good morning. Um, we've had such an amazing year, and I can't tell you how much I feel so blessed to get to be here, not only to teach you all about American history, which is amazing, but also the Bible and about God and just getting to walk with you and see you grow in the Lord is amazing. Um, such a blessing. So I have some advice um, for you first, my first advice is that I know that sometimes we take for granted that because we come to a Christian school, everybody's a Christian. Everybody's made that decision to follow Christ, but that's not true because it's not a decision that your parents make for you. It's your decision, right? So that would be my first thing. If you haven't made a decision to follow Christ, pray about it. Ask Him to lead you to that. Have, ask Him to give you the courage and talk to someone about it. Um, so that's my first advice. My second advice, um, and it kind of goes along with what we study in fifth grade. In Luke 12, 48, it says that to, much, to whom much is given, much is expected. That means people that are, have been given a lot of blessings, God is going to expect more of you. And guess what, guys? <laughs> You've been given a lot of blessings. Sometimes it may not feel like it. If you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas or, you know, you're having to do chores or homework or something, but I promise you, you are so blessed. You have families that have committed to get, put you at the school um, where you get to learn about Jesus. You have an amazing country that in fifth grade we study about all of the sacrifices that have been made so that we can have be free to come to a school like this and read the Bible and tell people about Jesus freely and openly. Um, we are so blessed to be here. So all of us are so blessed, and God expects us to use those blessings for His kingdom. So that's one challenge that I have for you. You're not too young to do that. Okay, it's not something you do later when you get out of college. Right now, how can I use my blessings for God? And the second thing is something that we talk about in fifth grade. At the beginning of fifth grade, we, talk, we go through the Old Testament. 
and we talk about um, the Israelites as they're leaving and how they constantly would try to do the right thing. But then every, and it uses this phrase a lot, everyone does what's right in their own eyes. And that seems like a good thing. Like they're trying to do right. They're like, they're looking and trying to do what they think is right. But was it a good thing? No, because we don't know. We don't know at all. And when we start trying to do what we think is right, and we're not looking at the Bible to tell us what is right, we will always end up wrong. And when they did that, it wasn't that God didn't forgive them. When we do that, God doesn't say, well, I'm done with you. Thank goodness. He's a merciful God, and He's gracious, and He forgives us. But they missed out on a lot of blessings because they walked away and tried to do what they thought was right instead of what God told them to do. So that's my encouragement to you. No matter what it is, you've been given blessings, and you know what's right. Um, you know what God says is right. So you've got to do that, whether it's being obedient, truthful, doing your best at work, anything, right? Forgiving your friends, turning the other cheek when someone does something. All of those things you know are right. You know that's what the, God's Word says. So I challenge you and I challenge myself. We're not going to do what's right in our own eyes because that's going to get us into trouble. We're going to miss out on blessings. Go to the Bible, read God's Word, follow that, okay? Hello, everyone. So I want to start by just addressing this to kids that I've had in my class. I just want to say thank you. I feel like God has blessed me so much with the relationships that I've gotten to build with y'all. Y'all have been a blessing to me just in ways that y'all don't know. Just your sweet spirits, your joy, your humor. Y'all bless me so much. So I just want to say thank you. And it's been a joy to see the unique ways that God has made you. He really has given each of you, and this applies to everyone in this room, but he has given each of you gifts that are from him that you can uniquely use to encourage people to impact God's kingdom in this world. So I want to encourage everyone with that. And then I do have two pieces of advice. So my first piece of advice is to use this time wisely. Being a kid and being young, it's only going to happen once, and it's, it's easy to not really appreciate some of the things that are in your life right now. For example, maybe having a weekly memory verse is something that feels like a burden. It feels like a chore and homework, but that is one example of something that it is a gift and a blessing to have the opportunity. Like our school is so special that we get to do those things. Um, and I want you to raise your hand. Does anyone in here have a piggy bank or use a piggy bank? Okay, so you know what a piggy bank is. You save your money, you tuck it away, and you're investing, right? So that someday you can choose to spend that money or maybe someday you have to spend that money because there's a crisis or something. And that's how you should think of your time now at this school. You are investing spiritually in the spiritual piggy bank so that when you graduate, if you've invested and if you've really taken the time to not just memorize the scripture so you can get an A on the, the verse test, but if you let it sink into your heart and you've tucked it away and you've put it in that spiritual piggy bank, you will be so rich by the time that you graduate this school. And that is a gift that not everyone has, truly. So that's one encouragement, is to really use this time that you're at the school where you get to have time built into your day where you're learning the Bible, where you're memorizing scripture, you will be spiritually rich. And then the, the last piece of advice is that you are not too young. Um, you're not too young to start using the gifts and talents that God has given you. Um, I know that, you know, this was just said, but, you know, you think everyone here is a believer and has a relationship with the Lord. That may not be the case. Um, but you can also minister to people who are believers, too. So even though you're not a missionary out there in some foreign country or working a job with people who don't believe in God, you still have a calling right now, and that's to know God, to get to know Him, to invest in your relationship, and also to be an encouragement to your brothers and sisters in Christ, which are the people at this school. So I love y'all. Um, I just pray blessings over you, and I'm thankful to, to know you guys and to be at BCS. 
I know that I'm not good at talking in front of everyone, and so I already had, because my voice gets shaky, because I cry, but um, I already talked to my class uh, about all this. We had a good little talk and devotional this morning, but we agreed that I would come up here and just share some advice. Um, and when I thought about this, the what I keep hearing from the Lord is words, just the word, words. And so we talked about words that I say all the time, like, is your name on your paper? Um, turn to the next blank page. Um, what were some of the other ones? Don't you dare misspell a spelling word when you can use your list. It's right there. You just rewrite it right here. And on and on and on. And so those are my words. And then we had a discussion about their words and how all year something else that I say is that their words can either build people up or they can tear people down. And when they build people up, those words are from the Lord. And when they're tearing them down, those are from the enemy. And you cannot let the enemy win this game of your words. And then the most important words of all are the words from the Lord, God's Word. And this year, my whole class encouraged me to read through God's Word. And we would have, like, they would ask and keep me accountable. And that is just a blessing that I'll never forget that your encouragement for me to get through the Bible and just how lovely and encouraging and you were during that time. And so that is such a gift that all of you gave me. And I'm done before I cry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave you with one last thing. Your very last chapel, I want to make sure, I need everybody listening, that you know how to accept Christ as your Savior. You've been taught it over and over and over and over and over, but open your ears. Lord, right now, unplug their ears. Open their hearts. The God of the universe who created each one of you, He knows every hair on your head. Listen, He loves you enough that His precious Son, He sent down here. You older kids, I can say it, He was crucified cruelly. And every one of those lashes, every hit on the nail was our sin. But it had to happen because we can't earn our way to Jesus, y'all. The own, I mean, to God, Jesus is the only way. You cannot be good enough. None of us. Hear me. You have to accept his free gift. And I want you as your principal the last thing you hear from me in the chapel is that it's free and all you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come, be my Savior. That's it. And then you're sealed by His Spirit. You are His. And you know what He also does? is gives you this. This will answer everything. Everything. And you can trust it. It's true. Even if you don't believe this is true, guess what? It is true. I want you guys to be in heaven with all of us around the room. I want us to be up there praising Him, glorifying Him, celebrating Him, laughing about the things that happened on earth, and then seeing how each of us had the opportunity to affect another person. A kind word, service, a sweet glance, response to a gift. And so every one of you hear me now. When the Spirit speaks to you, accept Him. Okay? I want to pray over you. Father, it's your timing. We know that. But we have a responsibility to share your good news. Share the way that we become believers. And we know, God, that your son died once for all. For all. Forever. He doesn't have to keep dying. He did it. And he desires that every person comes and says, Jesus... I want you be my Savior. 
Father, thank you for your spirit who lives in us then, who has a big job of transforming us. And I know, Lord, that that's continual all our lives until we face you. And we are in your arms and you wrap us up. And then we get to see all of the people who went before. And then we're there getting to see all the people that you call home. So Lord, have your way with these kids. Use them in their families. Use them in their churches. Use them in their neighborhoods. And some you'll call across the world. I pray we're obedient to whatever he has. Open our mouths. Make us so brave and so courageous because we don't want to face you later and you say, hey, I got, gave you the opportunity and you didn't take it. We know your work's going to be done, but what a joy for you to use us. So Lord, we love you. We thank you that we're at a place we can praise you. We can do it without fear. We can learn about your word and we invite you every day. Bless these teachers, bless these kids, bless these families, and bring us all back together safe and ready to learn next year. It's in your son's name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen.